All right, let's do this. Let's get a little bit closer. Yep, there we go. Hope everybody's doing great, beautiful people of Instagram. This is Jose Trujillo once again coming to you here from the art studio. I'm going to do a little sketch right here for you guys. I've been working on some sketches. I've been working on some drawings and it's time to do some drawings. You got to do a little bit of everything. Uh, well, you don't have to. I do. To stay fresh. To keep my hustle fresh. One of the things that I like to do is just move, right? Just move my hands. And I'm gonna use a, a piece of uh, charcoal here. This is uh, this is what what type of charcoal is this? Let me see. It's a vine charcoal. Yeah, it's a vine charcoal. How's it going, D Tom's? How's it going, uh, Jana? Happy New Year, guys! Happy New Year, everybody! Uh, I'm gonna use a piece of vine. Very simple stuff. Uh, very fragile too. Snap! There it is. It's very fragile stuff. Um, I don't know. Some artists like to use it. I like to use it because it's uh, it's soft too. It's a soft mine, and it keeps me in that flow. So what I like to do, I'm gonna I'm gonna share with you guys a little secret that I like to do. I like to practice with old master paintings, paintings by the old masters. It's not a trick. Everybody does this. Everybody has always done it. I just Probably do it more than the average artist. I do it a lot. And it keeps me moving, okay? So I'm gonna do a little figurative drawing right here. It's one of the one of the ways that I just keep moving. And I when one of the reasons that I like to do this is that when I am creating artwork, right, there is no uh, there is no right or wrong when it comes to this. So uh, this one is a little bit more messy than some other ones that I've gotten. But uh, there is no right or wrong way, right? So, uh, one of my philosophies in artwork is you have to mess up, uh, but you have to mess up a lot. It's, it's only in the degree that you mess up that you learn. I was reading that, I know here I go with my, with my stuff, but I was reading that athletes, right, uh, they're notorious for messing up a lot, right? They're notorious for messing up a lot. For doing, for putting things where they're not supposed to, right? Uh, as artists, we, we almost get shamed for that. There's a shame, right? There's a shame thing. It's a, uh, it's uh, I can't believe that line doesn't go there. Oh, this or that. But this, this gives me the, the freedom. It allows me to, to sort of, uh, you know, have a, a, a sense of no one is watching, no one is going to judge me, I can go up and down, I can do whatever I want, I do what I want. And that allows for different creativity, as I've, as I've mentioned before, guys, in uh, Degas used to say, look, it's only when the artist doesn't know what he or she is doing, that, that he or she is actually doing something, good and as artists we don't give ourselves that chance you know we we stay there and we're like oh and sorry there's there's time for that i'm not saying there isn't time for that if you're a realist drawing uh realist right a realist artist you got you certainly got a lot of time for that right uh i've been around some uh, very awesome realist artists too artists that practice uh school of realism and and uh i've seen that they doodle a lot, right? Like, they doodle a lot. And it used to baffle me always. It used to baffle me. How come these guys are doodling so much if they're like, you know, they're like realist artists? Because you always see, uh, well, not always, but many times you see realist artists who are, who are, I mean, even the way that they sharpen the pen or the pencil, the way that they sharpen their charcoal, it's, you know, it's got to be this way, you know, very specific way. And of course, there's a, there's a school of thought like that, and it's very good. I love seeing what they do, they're, they're masters at it. But I also see that many of them, especially I've seen a lot, many of the, the ones that are like older masters, master artists, uh, they, they, uh, they, they seem to go into the, into the whole doodling thing. 
And I don't know uh, if it's because they sort of overcome, uh, I don't know, the, the, the pressure, I guess, of performing, right? The pressure of doing it right, of performing, and kind of transcend that. I don't know if it's because of that. Uh, I have my beliefs, my ideas, but it doesn't really matter what it is. What matters is that, is that you do it. You know, you do the work. Here, I'm going to do another one really quick again. I'm going to do another little head right here. And, and, and you know, pick whatever. Whatever works for you, you know. It doesn't have to be, uh, doesn't have to be a master artist. You can pick a photograph from your, from your, the reason I like to pick master artists is because they already sort of, not sort of, they already figured out the kinks for us, right? Uh, how's it going, Noah? Noah says I join a lot of these. Uh, you're just, you're just great. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Uh, this guy's already figured out the kinks, right? The master artist already did that. And one of the things that I do is I do this a lot. I do this a lot. Why? Because it keeps you moving. You know, if it keeps you moving... Then you drop thinking about it so much, and then you're just like, oh, okay, oh man, what is, you know, what's going, what's going on right here? I don't know what's going on. I don't care about what's going on. What I care about is that is that I'm able to to uh, you know to to move because it's in the movement. I'm looking for movement, and it's sort of like. Uh, I was a musician, guys, and one of the things that I've learned, and, and I learned this by, by mimicking or, or modeling, sort of, uh, a lot of the professional musicians, what they do is that they, they'll start jamming, right? This, I consider them jamming sessions. I start jamming, and when I start jamming, one, one way of doing it, if you don't want to spend a lot on paint or canvases or whatever, get a book of this. Get a book of it. It doesn't have to be this big. I like, I like them some of them bigger, but uh, what starts doing is that is that you start playing with 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 what you already know, right? I'm not saying that this is how you learn. This is how you let loose. This is not how you learn. In in any way, I'm saying this is how you're going to learn. No, like like there's schools of thought of how you learn to paint. Because I know some people have told me, man, you told me that I was going to learn this way, and I haven't learned. I I I I've never said you learn this way. Uh, maybe if I have, please forgive me. <laughs> this is not how you learn. This is, this is how you practice. This is how you keep the hustle young, you know? This is how you stay green. I like to just move. In the movement, something, something special happens. What happens is that, one, you start figuring out your own voice. Two... Uh, you break the barrier that most artists bring around. The barrier is that I'm not good enough. It's that, it's that crap that we carry around that I'm not good enough. Uh, even artists that are, um, that, that most people would consider great, they'd be like, oh man, that artist is great. He's really good. He or she is uh, doing some fantastic, you know, um, uh, hyper-realism or, or, you know, or John Singer Sargent type of, you know, lose realism and blah, blah, blah. Uh, and yes, I said lose because he was considered, you know, his brushwork was considered loose, very impressionistic. One of the reasons why he wasn't popular in, I think, England. Yeah, in England, they didn't, they didn't like him that much because of that. And, uh, <clears throat> and what I was, <laughs> I lost my train, my, my train of thought for ranting on, 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 on Sergeant. But what happens is that you start, you start, um, you know, overcoming that, that, that tightness, you know, we, we, we become tight as we create artwork. One of the things, practice different stuff. One of the things that I've, that I've done in, in, in my career is instead of using a brush like this, right? Because many, many of us are used to using a brush like this. Instead of using a brush like this, uh, start switching, start moving to something I don't know. Go, go for the ridiculous. I don't know. Use the brush like that to create a small painting. Not to create a big painting. Create a small painting. You know, like start start doing things that that are not um, uh, how do you call them conventional. And that keeps you that keeps you moving. You know, it keeps that thing that uh, keeps you it keeps you alert. 
And certainly not uh, the only way of doing it. This is how I do it. I'm just sharing with you guys how I do some of my stuff. It's certainly not the way of the only way of doing things. But, you know, it's one way, you know. And if you're bold like me, you sign it and you sell it. And if you're not, you know, I'll throw it away and practice again. <laughs> so there you guys have it. Let me show you guys what I'm doing right here. Bam! Look at that. Master Artista. Dun, dun, dun. That guy looks a little scared. I think he's a, I think he's a little afraid of 2018. 2018 is going to be tough. It's got to be. Tough in a good way. Challenging. Got to stretch. Got to grow. Get out of your comfort zone. All right, guys, the name is Jose Trujillo. I am the world's greatest living artist. Thank you so much for hanging out. I will be doing this awesome videos every day. There's going to be different videos. I'm committed to showing up. I already ate my, my fair share of tamales. I'm not going to do that anymore until next year. And uh, I'm ready to show up and do my thing. Yeah. Check it out. Muy loco. But you know what? You gotta be like you gotta be like that. You gotta you gotta do what's what your thing, right? Your thing. But uh, this is a good practice. This is a good little practice to stay loose. You know, maybe your work is much more realistic. Maybe your work is much more abstract. Whatever, it doesn't matter. What matters is that you start you start becoming loose. You know, you start becoming loose. And uh, how's it going, uh, Monte Nine Two Six? Yeah, the medium here is charcoal on uh, charcoal paper. Let me see if you guys can see the grids of the charcoal paper right there. Yeah, tooth, tooth, uh, charcoal paper, charcoal paper with, 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 that has uh, those little grits, that tooth. Uh, but I use this, and I'm not bashing because I love their paint. I use this, uh, Winsor and Newton. I love Winsor and Newton. Uh, I love their oils. I, I like their acrylics, but I really love their oils. Uh, and I use this. One of the things, I don't know what I've used before. That it feels like a marker, and I don't know if it's maybe that it's not it's it's not uh, it's a vine charcoal. It's very soft. I don't know if it's that it's not strong enough or something. There's something to it because I just got this one it's medium. There you go. It's because it's medium. I don't know, but as I'm painting, it leaves a lot of residue that I have to like constantly be blowing right, and I don't like doing that. I don't like to be blowing on it. I, I've used some before. I don't know if it was from the same company or not. I have no idea. Uh, anyone from, from Windsor and Newton, if I ever get big enough. <laughs> if I ever get big enough. Of course I'm going to get big enough. When you guys uh, send me some to try. I don't know. because I've, I've tried some more, some really good. But I don't know if it's because it's medium or not. Who knows. It is charcoal on paper. I love practicing charcoal on paper. I love also practicing with watercolors. Someone uh, told me also, I don't know if they work. I think they told me they work for Windsor & Newton. They told me to check out, I think, their, their acrylics for large, uh, uh, large watercolor type of works. Because I've been looking for, for, for uh, to create large format watercolors. Uh, and I've, I've been looking for what paints to use because usually watercolors come in like these little things I, I don't I don't want to mess with those. I want like big like, you know, like if you're gonna use paint like that, but with watercolor I want big look how look how messy this thing is and I gotta clean it so Yeah, there you guys have it stay cool guys. I love uh, I love that you guys have been uh, uh, Contacting me back and, and being awesome and telling me about 2018 and how awesome it's going to be. We we got this year. We're gonna grab this 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 bull by the horns and we're gonna kick his butt. We're gonna do great 2018, guys. If we did if we did good on 2017, 2018 better hold uh go hide or something because we're gonna kick its butt. We got this. I know a lot of you guys have been have been practicing. A lot of you guys have been getting ready to go to get gallery exhibits and all kinds of other cool stuff. Um, I'm happy right now also because I've I've turned my whole home studio into a bigger home studio. I've got more more storage space and and all kinds of cool stuff. So I'm happy about that too. 
Uh, have you ever tried black and white pieces with gesso and paints gray? I have tried. I have tried uh, black and white pieces with gesso. I, I, I'm not sure if I've done it exactly um, how you're saying it. Uh, I have painted with gesso <laughs> as well. Uh, used used, uh, used gesso as both uh, underpainting and also use it as white instead of using white using just pure gesso with and mixing it with uh, you know black acrylic paint and 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 paints gray as well but i don't know if i don't know i don't know exactly what how how uh, how you've done it i'd love to see some of your work uh um with you know using this particular method black and white pieces with gesso and paints gray that sounds interesting i like that i i think i've tried some variations of that i don't i'm not sure if it's the exact thing but i, I tried some variations i love doing those black and white pieces i'm gonna get back to doing some you know what i like about black and white pieces uh i like i i've been holding on lately and not doing so many of them i uh um i haven't done i haven't done in a while because i've been stretching some large canvases i really want to try with large canvases i want to try some different stuff with large canvases you know, some uh, five, seven, eight feet canvases. I think that's gonna, they're gonna look really amazing there. Uh, I really love abstract work, but I have a hard time. I have a bear, actually, I have a very hard time creating abstract work in small pieces. I don't know why. Maybe it's because uh, my perception of it or my, my, my uh, practice. Maybe I don't have enough practice with it, but I wanna get, I wanna get it done in large pieces. It's just, it feels better. I don't know why. Just abstracts in large format just feels right for some reason. So there you guys have it. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. I appreciate the participation. You guys are super awesome. I will talk to you guys soon. And, and you know, keep it awesome. Kick 2018's booty. We can do it. Adios, amigos.